Hi, and welcome to episode 7 of Your Creepiest Corner. With us today is... Jacqueline Breakwell. Also known as... Miss Kiss. And tell us, Jacqueline, what do you do? I do lots of things. <laughs> That's the fun thing about my life. If you want to know the spooky things, <laughs> I do. Because it's not very spooky that I work in an office all day. Yeah. But I also, I'm an actor for film and television. So I do lots of auditioning for that and some stuff. And then I do burlesque as well as different cabaret and musical theater. And I like to make stuff and be a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> So, I've seen a couple of your burlesque acts, mm -hmm. and I know that you tend to do it a bit more on the horror side. Yes. Do you want to kind of elaborate on, yeah. on that side of... Um, my first burlesque that I ever made, and because I was such a go-getter, it had to involve everything. So, it was an homage to Alice Cooper while singing a heart song in a straight jacket, spitting blood, throwing blood glitter, wearing bondage rope, cutting my underwear off. It was like <laughs> all the things. So it was crazy on you and I had to go crazy and do all those things. And then um, my signature act that I have is my bloodbath. So I sing a Radiohead song wearing a very gorgeous vampire outfit created by Misty Greer. And uh, I end up in a bloodbath. <laughs> That's why it's my bloodbath act. So I generally like to pour blood on myself and people generally ask for that they're like can we get that but then also fit this theme and just like throw some blood on it so a lot of the acts i like to create now i see on the table here yes. you've recently won an award I did. do you want to talk about yes the nightingale yeah so this year for the vancouver international burlesque festival you are nominated like everybody sends in their nominations for who they think falls into these categories and then everybody votes on it so the nightingale was for somebody in the burlesque community that brings you to your knees with their singing <laughs> and because that is my first love uh, in performing is singing and i felt that's the best way i can express myself is with my voice i incorporate that in a lot of my acts and so that was very unexpected it was extremely <laughs> flattering i was so <laughs> overjoyed to receive it but i was just like wow and so i think like because we're all weirdos and we come from oh, this yeah. like weird place of being an other you don't think that a bunch of beautiful sparkly people that you're obsessed with are going to be like you get an award for being <laughs> one of us and so yeah it was it was pretty awesome oh, yeah. Deserved. Thank well deserved. Well <laughs> deserved. I've definitely seen your acts. Uh, now, do you want to talk about acting and doing acting for horror? Yes. I haven't, luckily, through you, lovely folks, you <laughs> bad cookie folks, I've been able to do one of um, my things I've always wanted to do, which is be a horror host. <laughs> yeah. I got to do that with your bad cookie combo. Um, and you folks basically just let me be an extension of myself um, talking about horror and um, being terrible to my husband, which was great. Um, but yeah, the thing with, with film and television is you're going out and you're auditioning and you're just, you're hoping that you're right for that role um, and I haven't gotten to do um, on like the main big TV side Netflix side of things a lot of horror things but when I do get to audition I got to audition to be the victim at the beginning of the remake of Leprechaun didn't get it but that's like my dream I'm like I want to be I mean I obviously want to be like a great like hero yeah. at the end but to be that first person that gets killed off I don't know what it is about it I just love that role probably yeah. from Scream with Drew Barrymore um, but yeah so I mean for horror acting it's not so much in film that I get to I have with you folks but it's more the things I create for myself than I get to be spooky uh. we all get to wear these masks right and I put on that mask that I'm totally normal and ready to audition for your Hallmark film so well the first time I would have met you would have been the Luchagor 
Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Felice Complien. Yes. So that was great. Gigi um, of Luchagor was putting on her production and she needed some women who were okay to be less clothed and to get a bunch of red blood rain down on them. And I'm yeah. like, yes to all. So that was pretty <laughs> That was pretty sweet. Because that's the thing is, I'm like, I'm fine. Anyway, if you want to cover me in blood, if you want to, you got like, just a dead body in the corner, like, I'm here for you. And I think that's pretty much what I messaged Gigi. Like, I'm a fan of your work. I'm a fan of what you do. If I can be involved in any way, even a dead body, <laughs> call me up. And she did. And it wasn't a dead body. Now, you're also, like, really big when you do cosplay. Yes. <laughs> Cosplay is super fun. The, basically, how I got into my love of horror is Halloween. Yeah. That was like my parents were always big into it. My mom, my grandma was a seamstress. My mom sewed as well. So I learned to sew. And every year she would make my Halloween costume. And it was a, always a big thing to carve the pumpkins, to do all of that stuff. And then when I found out about cosplay, I was like, Oh, more excuses <laughs> for Halloween. And so basically that's what I do with my cosplay. And the great thing about it is it's just like Halloween. It's a day when you can be anything you want, do anything you want. Um, and I don't so much care. Like, I obviously I do Harley Quinn and, and stuff like that, which everybody knows who she is. But when I go into the horror genre, most people won't know who I am. But the folks that do get real <laughs> excited. Like, I'm really excited. I'm This yes. one I recognize very well. Yeah. So this was Sam from Trick or Treat. And so I did my own little version of her. And I got to wear my little Halloween candy corn socks and skip around. I actually made the buttons for my eyes so I couldn't <laughs> see much. But I didn't care. And I had my lollipop. And again, people were like... <laughs> what is that about? But the people who knew were very excited. And I met uh, a Hellraiser there with his cube and everything. So, yeah. like, the spooky people yeah. find each other. <laughs> this one is a little bit harder to Yeah, this play. is a new... So I made this. So I've been wanting to do a Black Phillip burlesque for quite some time because that movie changed my life. Um, and so for Emerald City last year, I thought this will be my perfect excuse to, like, finish the costume yeah. and then because I don't have a date for this burlesque to emerge but it was I got to just walk around a convention as a goat woman and again <laughs> people would be like what? I don't know what it is but it's cool I'm like that's okay it's this film it's the witch do you like horror yeah. and what again the people that knew and the apple and the little things when they got it they were pretty excited you said you came up doing singing a lot yeah and just how how singing and horror has affected um so i'm quite a theatrical person yeah. in general <laughs> um i grew up my dad when he found out that i liked rock and roll and i think rock and roll is definitely on the darker can be on the darker side of things um he brought up his old record collection from the basement and that's where i found out about bowie and iggy and queen and alice and so that was when i discovered Alice Cooper because I loved performing but I thought how can I do this like with rock and roll with what I'm doing so when I discovered Alice Cooper that was like an insane life changer for me because that I was like that's what I want to be I want to be Alice Cooper when I grow up and that's a great thing that I can share with my dad we've seen him together twice and I've seen him another two times after that but it is it is so great that he can go on and put on this character and become that. Um, and I've borrowed, a, I think we all borrow from little things and make them our own. And so that was the thing, taking kind of what he does, but adding the heart in for my first burlesque number <laughs> and doing that. And in general, I just find ways, I've, I find my voice, I feel the most ferocious when I'm singing rock and roll. And I wish, just like in the horror genre, that they're was more women fronting these things and so I do a lot of the time like to take songs that are masculine or done by males and just rip them apart with <laughs> my own spooky self. So you kind of segued into one of our normal questions mm. that we ask everybody and that's just why horror? <laughs> 
obviously growing up, I was different and I don't totally know what made me different, but I found comfort in the darker side of things. Um, I read Anne Rice when I was young and impressionable. So then that was that. Vampires were the best things ever. My first partner when I was 15, he was like, if you actually were a vampire, I would believe it. And I was like, thank you. So flattering of you. Um, so I think just like reading about the genre, loving the Halloween, the candy, that whole thing, and then starting to get into the films, I was terrified. Like when it first started, I remember creeping down the stairs at my aunt and uncle's house and they were watching The Abyss and I wasn't, I was too young to be watching it and I came downstairs and I still haven't seen this movie (laughs) to this day. But the, like, creature comes and, like, bites somebody. And I was like, that's why my parents told me I shouldn't be here. So I just ran upstairs, didn't tell them I saw it, just had to deal with my demons by myself. So I was a little nervous after that. But what really got me into horror was Scream. It's my gateway. I think it's perfect. The beginning was horrifying. Insides on the outsides hanging there. Um, But then it was so funny. And then you would hear like Randy's character talking about all the different tropes about horror and same with Rose McGowan and also in that it was like Sydney's character she was so badass and she was like I'm gonna keep fighting I'm gonna jump out a window and I'm gonna hurt my leg and I'm gonna keep running and I was like these are amazing like strong women doing badass things and I'm laughing and I'm scared at times (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's the best experience and so through scheme scream as my gateway i was able to watch scarier things and be fine and watch ridiculous horror things and be fine yeah <laughs> now you're all grown up now you've I'm all grown up. made all these costumes mm-hmm. you made a, a name for yourself in yeah. the vancouver scene yeah now what's your favorite horror movie of all time all time that is <laughs> That is, that's picking children. Yeah. I know I'm my mother's favorite child. It's easy for her to, but no. Um, I, oof, I'm gonna say that like Scream definitely holds Hold a sacred place in my heart for that. Yeah. Um, my boyfriend is the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. So that's got to be up there, <laughs> just like Monsters in Love. Like when Shape of Water came out, I died. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, that is the hardest question that you'll ever <laughs> ask a person. Yeah. And I mean, uh, like lately coming up as the witch. And I also, there's something just about demonic possession that I'm a big fan of, like yeah. in literature and everything. So exorcist, classic. 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 Changed the world. It did. It changed the world. <laughs> Again, here's like a badass woman just vomiting saying, fuck me, Jesus, with a crucifix. <laughs> like... Wasn't supposed to see that as a kid, but it <laughs> happened, and here I am today because of it. So, and you've worked a lot with um, just collaborators, yeah, burlesque horror films, even making stuff and selling it at Netherworld Collectibles. Yeah, like, you've created this gigantic network. Is there anybody you want to kind of plug? Oh my, like everybody. I want to plug everybody. Um, a lot of my uh, latex cosplay and stuff like that, um, Jenny at Deadly Couture, she owns her own shop. She brings in latex, but she also makes custom latex. Obviously, Daryl at Netherworld, my Sam Lollipop, my Black Philip Hooves, my overall horror needs, I can go to him for. Um, Gigi of Lucha Gore bringing me out, giving me my first taste of being in horror on screen. So big props to her, to the Bad Cookie team <laughs> for letting me live out my dream of being a horror host. Um, and then I think just like the spooky, witchy women in my life that you should be following on Instagram and wherever they go, like <laughs> Tristan Risk, Evelyn 13, um, there's Gidget Gravedigger who does lots of great things with Melody Mangler. Um, just the <laughs> spooky, uh, you had Jesse uh, Churchill on your as well and she creates spooky things and is just a good person to sit down and talk horror with, so get on her Instagram. <laughs> I don't know. There's too many amazing, spooky Vancouverites out there. 
and all over the world that you should be following. And one last plug I have to give for my love of creature and horror. There is a new book out. I have to plug this book. I just read it and it stole my heart. It's uh, The Lady from the Black Lagoon by Mallory O'Mara. So it's Hollywood Monsters and the Lost Legacy of Millicent Patrick. So she actually created the creature from the Black Lagoon that stole my heart and so many others. And she wasn't credited for it. And there's oh. not a lot known about her, but this amazing woman Mallory did some incredible digging and sleuthing and got everything that we could try to possibly know about this woman as well as she goes in depth into being a woman in horror and how that was nearly impossible back in this day and how it still is to this day there are still some issues that we face being women in in horror and liking yeah. that and all that so read a book so if people want to find you and and see your your work where should they look uh definitely on instagram at hello miss kiss um twitter i'm not as active on i can't with that <laughs> facebook has too many restrictions yeah. excellent well thank yeah. you so much for coming to talk with us. thank you for having me <laughs> it's been a pleasure it's been a fright <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and thank you guys for watching <laughs> Have a good Bye. night. Pleasant dreams. I'm an expert at love. My advice to you is to never give up, always take risks, and remember, sometimes the object of your affection may just need a little convincing.